You know what Leonardo da Vinci needed in his life? The same thing we do, money. He needed money to survive, and he farmed out his design talents to the dukes and lords and kings of the day, well, all the artisans did, to design these military weapons, both offensive and defensive. The third constant theme for the exhibit is over the last 550 years, the material has changed, the manufacturing processes have changed, but his basic design has withstood the test of time. This he called the martyr boat, today we call the battleship. He designed a 360 degree platform to be placed upon the top of the boat and the gearing system could be turned by the sailors. And as they turned this, uh, this 360 degree platform, they could, pl they could put guns and cannons and mortar fire on top and fire around in a 360 degree fashion, just like our gun turrets on our battleships today. What's changed? The material and the manufacturing process, but his design has withstood the test of time. This is the famous tank that was also designed for the Duke of Milan. And just like that war wagon we saw previously, you didn't want any one of those two jobs. You know what? You didn't want any one of these jobs. He designed this tank originally for horses, but they thought the horses inside would get so spooked they couldn't handle it. So they decided to what? Let's put men inside there instead. Wow, what a concept. It goes to what I was saying before, that if you built it exactly like Leonardo da Vinci designed it in his CODIS, it wouldn't have operated. He designed it originally as one bar for men to operate in a rowing fashion. But if you notice, if it's one bar, nothing happens. But by simply cutting the bar into two, his own Da Vinci Code, his own copyright, so to speak, that each one of the gears would begin to operate independently and the entire tank would begin to function. He designed it for soldiers to stand on top of this platform and the top of the tank would be then be lowered down over the top. Can you guess the idea where he got for the top of this tank? A tortoise shell, a turtle shell for protection. The soldiers would stand on top of this platform. The top would be lowered down. They would gaze out onto the battlefield, determine what would be happening, and then give orders and guidance to the soldiers inside the tank. I mean, just for a moment, can you imagine the sound and the noise and the chaos that would have been going on inside that machine? Leonardo da Vinci's first passion in life was obviously painting, but his second passion was flight. He wanted to fly like a bird from the beginning of time. We've all wanted to fly like a bird. He studied birds and bats and wings and flight patterns of all sizes and shapes and dimensions. On the flight display is the closest design that he came to physically mimicking a bird in flight. This was his bat wing glider. Now keep in mind, he didn't have all the bugs worked out of all of his inventions. He theoretically thought it would operate by the glider pilot's head would go through the opening. The glider pilot would hold on to either side in an attempt to manipulate the wing in flight. <laughs> yeah, right, huh? The Museum of Leonardo da Vinci in Florence actually has another name for this design over in Florence. You know what they call it? The decapitator. Because as soon as this thing hit the ground, your head came off. This is where Saturday Night Live meets the Renaissance, I like to say. Because you know what we need for this invention? More volunteers. Because the first five didn't fare so well, if you know what I mean. But in all of his writings and his codices and his notes, he theorized, and he theorized correctly, that for men to fly and to fly safely, that your wings had to be parallel at all times to the horizon. He designed the original inclimeter. The inclimeters above our boats and our planes today are highly computerized with gyroscopes and lasers. But this very simple design would simply tell the glider pilot that, hey, your wings aren't parallel to the horizon. He designed it to be in a glass bell so it wouldn't be affected by wind currents. He designed it to be on the glider in flight with the pilot. So in flight, the glider pilot could look over, determine if his wings were or were not parallel, and know to bring his wings back parallel to the horizon. You know what this was? The first onboard instrument, 500 years ahead of his time. 